Hey there, how are y'all doing today? This is Ray from Power Revolution. What's up? So glad you guys can join me. So I am out here at the beautiful park in Gainesville, Florida, and I am heading up on what I call my little mountain. So I am in the beautiful park with all the trees going up to a high place on the mount to talk to y'all a little bit uh, from the Word of God. <laughs> Being up here uh, under this tree here makes me kind of feel a little bit like Deborah in the Book of Judges where she uh, sat under a tree and she, you know, the people would come and, and she would give them wisdom from God and prophetic word to empower their lives and there was a soldier and his name was Barak and he wanted to win a mighty war but he said I can't do it unless you come with me and so and actually I believe it was her that called him isn't that something but yeah up here in the high place just in nature with God it just feels so good what I really wanted to tell you today though what really came into my heart was about transformation about transforming your life and I went through a major transfer transformation in my life um, it wasn't just weight loss I was 355 pounds I lost about 160 of that over the last uh, three years, most of which I lost almost immediately the first year. And that was really difficult. That was really hard. Just completely creating a new person. You know, not like outwardly, I no longer look the same as I had before. And it was like, it was a really drastic change for me. It was shocking. I remember walking past the mirror and being like, who's that? Oh, that's me. What? You know, going into the, the fitting room and having, trying on clothes that were way too big because it was like, it hadn't clicked in my mind yet that I was much smaller than before. You know, uh, I knew I was, you know, I look in the mirror and see that I was, but somewhere mentally, my mind wasn't completely accepting that. And I was still kind of going on remote control, you know, just like, um, not remote control, but just going through the motions of what I was used to. And so, you know, today I had made a post on my Instagram about revolution, And I was saying how letting go of the trauma of my past, letting go of the rape, the physical abuse, you know, all of those things that happened to me from the age of seven to, to the age of 37, uh, abusive marriages, uh, being, being, living in poverty, one time even being homeless for three months of my life with kids, you know, and I had four children um, and being a single mom the majority of those 27 years that even when I had a man it was like I had another child to take care of you know uh, not really having a full partner not really having a covering partner so I thought about it and I said you know all those years and and I hear testimony all the time well God changed me God came into my life and transformed me well you know what I had God in my life the whole time I was going through all that you know even though yes a lot of the reason that I was attracted to abusers was because I had been abused as a child from being raped and molested to my stepfather physically abusing me things like that that just germinated within my spirit and somehow I kept connecting with those same type same men that had that same type of mindset and 
I, but yet I rubbed up right up against, you know, the Holy Spirit. I was there in church. I prayed. I fasted. I, t I brought my kids up in church. But yet there was still aspects in my life that I t didn't totally tr uh, transform, that I conformed. I conformed. Why? Because my mind wasn't completely renewed. I didn't want complete and total transformation bad enough. And the catalyst, the catalyst was when I finally surrendered to Christ, the trauma of my childhood, the trauma of being raped at 17. That was the foundation that was the catalyst to spur my weight loss. And that weight that I had packed on all those years, overeating, was like a protective shield, almost a force field for me so that I wouldn't have to feel the pain of what I was in, of what of the life that I was living as I had not been yet transformed by the renewing of my mind, but I was still conforming to the world to fit in, to feel accepted, to feel loved. And so I wanted to say that if, you know, it doesn't matter how much you love God. It doesn't matter how much God loves you. It doesn't matter how many days of the week you go to church. Cause there were times I went to church three, four times a week. Cause I directed the te television ministry and I had to be there for Bible study, all the church services, special engagements, speakers, weddings, events, anything. It doesn't matter. Prayer service, prayer time. I was a, 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 a church leader. But if you do not want complete total transformation, you don't want to be made completely whole. You don't want the peace of God, which is complete wholeness in Christ. If you don't want that, then God is not going to force it on you. A lot of people think, and I heard a pastor say this uh, last Sunday that I visited uh, the other day. A lot of people think Jesus is like a magic foot. A, a, a lucky rabbit's foot. That's what he said. A lucky rabbit's foot. And that he's magical. That just by having Jesus in your heart, just magically, you're magically delicious. <laughs> you know, like everything is just going to transform and everything's going to be wonderful and beautiful and you're going to glow and it's just going to be so fantastic and only good things are going to come to you and you're going to get money and oh yeah, everything's going to be great. But no, that, mm, boo -boo, uh -uh, it doesn't work that way. You have to want it and you have to do the work. In the Bible, there was a woman that had an issue of blood. She had that issue of blood some umpteen years she suffered. And because of that issue of blood, she was she was not allowed into the um into the, the temple. She couldn't worship with everybody, she was excluded. And I don't know about you, but I know in my past, even with the weight. There were certain things I was excluded from. I couldn't ride every roller coaster ride that I wanted. I may not have been able to have all the, re the, the relationship options that I had hoped for. There were different things in my life, clothes I couldn't fit, rooms I couldn't step in, jobs that they decided I wasn't qualified for because of my, my size. And that could be education that could be because of the trauma that you've experienced how you so you self-sabotage every relationship uh that could be a lot of different things whatever what is your issue of blood you know what is that situation in your life that has excluded you from living fully in your potential from from fully realizing your dreams from accomplishing that vision of yourself that you have seen for yourself and know that you should be, but just aren't yet. And for that woman, it was, it was nonstop bleeding. But one day she heard Jesus was coming. Now he had been through that town many times. This wasn't, I guarantee you the first time that woman had heard Jesus was coming.
I guarantee you that wasn't the first time she had heard about Jesus. She could have probably went to the next town and got healed a long time before that. But there was something in her spirit that said, now I have had enough. And I know that I know that I deserve to be made whole. And she pressed towards him. And even though there was a crowd of people all around saying, no, nah, mm -mm, you ain't going to be able to make it. You ain't going to lose all that weight. You ain't going to break free of that addiction. You're not going to turn loose of your past. She pressed. She pressed through the crowd that said she wasn't supposed to be there. That said she was unclean and didn't measure up. She pressed because she wanted to be made whole. And it was the pressing. It was the decision that she had. The faith in Christ and the decision and the action that brought about complete healing. Not just physical healing, but wholeness. So it doesn't matter how much you're around God and how much you do in the church and how, how many people pray for you and how, how, how many hours you lay on your face praying for others. What matters is your decision that you are a child of God, a royal chosen vessel of the most high creator of all creation and that if he is whole and he is your Abba, he is your daddy, then you too as the glory of him that dwells upon the earth also should be made whole, also should live in peace in every area of your life and put action to it. Go after it. Press in relationship with Jesus. Press to get close and be intimate with him. I'll never forget that even when I was still living, grappling with certain, you know, uh, relationships that had broken me down and, and, and were abusing me and, and, and I, I felt like I just, you know, that was all I deserved. That's all, you know, that life would have for me. And I was living in poverty. And I was frustrated with my circumstances. And I continued to conform. You know, I knew the Lord. I loved God. I was powerfully anointed. I was born prophetic and an apostle. But I, hmm, I hid it. Because I wanted to be like everybody else. And I didn't quite understand it. But I do remember that even so, I would go into the house of God and I would say, God, everything about me is like filthy rags and I don't deserve your grace. I don't deserve your mercy. I don't deserve your love because that's what I believed. And in fact, we really don't deserve it by our own merit but we do in the sense of we're his child but I didn't quite understand that and I stood there less than who God had created me to be and ashamed and allowed Satan to keep me locked up keep me imprisoned by that shame but what saved me is I said, even though I'm nothing but filthy, dirty rags, a bloody mess, don't forsake me, Lord. Let me just touch the hem in your garment. Let me just keep pursuing you. Allow me, God, to just praise you, to just love on you. It's okay. You don't have to love me back. You don't have to, you don't have to give me anything. You don't have to rescue me out of poverty. You don't have to transform my life. 
You don't have to stop this man from raping and beating and, and cheating on me. You don't have to do any of that because I don't deserve it. But God, please, let me just love you. Allow me to stand here and worship you. And that is where the transformation began. It was slow. It was slow. It took years for me finally to say, you know what? It's okay for God to love me. It's okay to receive that love. And I do deserve to be made whole because he died for me. He loved me that much. He died for me. Why would I hold back being his glory? Why would I hold back on the gifts he's given me and the assignment that he has created me to fulfill? And as I made up in my mind to bring my issue of blood to Yeshua Malek Sheik, my Lord Jesus. I transformed from the inside out. And not only physically did the weight come off, but financially, emotionally, mentally, my relationships changed. My geographic location changed. My territory expanded. And now I stand here today, able to minister and uplift others to stand in their power and to gloriously, courageously accept the transformation that God has for you. All right, I love you to life. Have a blessed and God-filled day. Be strong, be brave, <laughs> and be courageous. So, as I listen back to the video that I just finished about transformation, the Spirit of the Lord came upon me, and God gave me a word to give you all for the year 2022. And that word is, 2022 is the year of transfiguration. Not transformation, but transfiguration. And that means that nothing, nothing in your life is going to be the same. Not only are we all going to experience drastic change and transformation, but we won't even look the same. We won't look the same. We won't talk the same. We won't walk the same. People may not even recognize us because we will be clothed in the glory of God and our life and our circumstances will be so altered, so drastically uplifted, so amazingly purposeful, so, so in, in, enmeshed in the goodness, the grace, the peace, the mercy, the, the wholeness of who God is that people will not be able to compute that you are the same person that you were last year or decades before or the year before. And, and you know, I, this light wasn't shining like this. Okay, I can't get away from the light. All oh, that's prophetic, y'all. All oh, that's prophetic. You see how the light was just blinding over myself? Like you couldn't see, see me because of the light. The Spirit of God is gonna be shining so brightly within you that that's all people will see is is God's glory on your life on your circumstances and so I decree to you today that as you walk forward into the fullness the fullness of God's glory over you in your life over your children that you and everything you dream about will be made whole will be completely transformed. And I, I prophesy geographic location changes. I prophesy, hold on. On a global scale, God just gave me this word. I saw a building like that of the World Trade Center just exploding. Um, but I, I don't feel necessarily that we will experience more uh, attack 
or war necessarily and that be possible i don't like to think that way but i do feel that there are going to be some situations and circumstances in your life that are just gonna it's like a bomb detonated but in the dust of that ah yeah yeah duh. there is a seed of transformation and and the transformation the dust mm, hey, when the air when the when the breath of the holy spirit hits that dust a whole new life a whole new body a whole new career a whole new relationship with god within yourself some of y'all getting married some of y'all birthing children in 2022 that it'll be a complete transformation from the wreckage. I see that there are going to be situations and circumstances that occur that it's going to feel like a wreckage. It's going to feel like everything was decimated. But out of that, whew, huh, God is going to reveal his glory in a way in your life that will transfigure your entire life to the point that all that people will see is the brilliance, the radiance, the beauty, the wholeness and the peace and the sanctification, the separation of your true royal heritage in the highest place of heaven. You will be seated with authority over the same people that whoa, tried to detonate your life. That is what 2022 is going to be like. And that could be the Omicron and the COVID. And that could be military warfare. That could be personal character assassinations and attacks. That could be divorces. That could be, you know, uh, losing your job bad health reports but all of those things and i mainly feel that the wreckage comes at the hand of enemies at the hand of those that are opposed to you but all of those things where they i literally see them bam you know pushing down the lever to detonate that building like a uh um uh oh goodness invader you know uh not assassin like a terrorist attack. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> but yeah, I see at the hands of terrorists, people that strategically have tried to decimate you, destroy your reputation, destroy your life, that though they may blow things up, they just shook you loose for God's glory. Because when you come out, and I, I'm hearing towards the summer of 2022, your whole life will be transfigured. You will have abundance and wealth. I mean, anything that they tried to destroy. Health, your money, your peace of mind, your relationships, everything. God is turning that thing around. All right, he's a mountain mover, y'all. He's a mountain mover. So I just wanted to add to y'all that that is a prophetic word. And it is attached to the the sermon that I just ministered to you um, previously. So all of that is prophetic word. When, when, you're, when you are operate, when a person is operating in the office of prophet, everything they say is prophetic, even if they're not saying, and thus saith the Lord. So just so you know, all of it was prophetic for you. Okay, I love y'all the life, and you can't do anything about it.